If there's one thing that sticks in your mind after playing Heart of Darkness, it's the death animations. Despite the fact that you play as a kid, getting to the end all but guarantees a number of gruesome mishaps along the way. Back in a time when cinematic platformers were rife with trial and error, Heart of Darkness still managed to stand out as an extreme example, but it's hard not to appreciate the artistry of failure in this one. Never before or since has a child been so elaborately animated being crushed, incinerated, chewed, and my favourite, picked up then snapped like a twig. It's an unforgettable sight to behold, and yet as much as I appreciate a willingness to push boundaries, I'm not sure I could defend a modern implementation of it. Rendering this kind of violence with the full force of modern hardware might cross a line and leave more than a handful of artists with a lifelong therapy bill. It's the low resolution cartoony style which takes enough edge off for it to work, appropriately shocking without being distasteful. In that sense it's a skillfully executed game which will probably stick with you long after finishing, maybe for the rest of your life. To be fair, while trial and error is a major component of this one, you can also see at least a few attempts to nudge players in the right direction. Like how this lizard hints that you can climb walls, or how you're baited into firing at this piranha plant which reveals an unexpected side effect of your power. Compared to another world, hazards, terrain and interactable objects are much more clear across the board. There's also been an effort to make the AI fair in at least some sense of the word. Even during brutal encounters where the screen floods with opponents, there appears to be an algorithm at play ensuring that only a couple of attacks can be launched at once, and seemingly never in a way which is impossible to deal with as long as you don't panic. By the time you conquer the final boss, you might even find that parsing all the chaos on screen and dodging fireballs was fun in a surprisingly traditional sense. If you ask me, it relies on such moments a little too much in the second half, but outside of that, there's no fault to be found with pacing. Much like another world, the premise drops players into an alien landscape, but hardware advances in the interim allowed Heart of Darkness to be rendered with much more detail, capitalising better on its promise of new landscapes and creatures to confront. Apart from a disappointingly generic lava stage, it delivers in that regard. Gimmicks tend not to wear out their welcome, some being used for just a few screens each. There's always something new around the corner, with the downside being that a few aspects have unrealised potential as a result. Background shadows are a hazard of their own, which is an interesting twist, especially novel at a time when dynamic, detailed shadows were unheard of. This mechanic is introduced early, but apart from a few welcome reprisals here and there, it doesn't get much playtime. It's not hard to imagine some version of this game which leaned on that concept much more heavily. Despite doing an otherwise admirable job of presenting a hostile planet, in some ways it can feel like a retread of another world. The Amigo characters fill the familiar role of an alien companion, which was better realised in the previous game where it had more focus. Even as a 10 year old, these guys were a little too goofy for my taste, which leads to a bit of tonal whiplash around the midway point, but I think it just about works, and thankfully the payoff doesn't really hinge on your attachment to them anyway. Regardless, there's a cathartic moment towards the end which I'd prefer not to spoil, but suffice to say it pulls a devastatingly effective trick with the player character's progression that brings the experience to a close in a very satisfying way. It's not as though this kind of payoff could only be achieved through a cinematic platformer, but it's a case where a willingness to go against the grain was backed up by solid execution to great effect. As you'd expect, many of the most memorable sequences are tightly scripted moments where players need to hit their mark and stay in line to achieve the desired result, but even though its artificiality is plain to see, something about the unrelenting challenge really grounds those moments as just another part of a genuine adventure, with some very real ups and downs. In the intervening years, scripted set pieces have become far more common, and although I understand the logic in making such sequences deliberately easy so as not to disrupt the player's immersion with a non-canon death, there is some kind of downside to that approach which Heart of Darkness lacks. It's merciless, and its world feels merciless as a result. If you endure that hardship all the way to the end, you'll be rewarded with an anaglyph 3D version of the final cutscene, so be sure to track down a pair of glasses before you embark. As a certified exapunk, I carry mine with me at all times, but even though each copy came with a free pair, it was forward thinking to show the cutscene normally first. It has much better colour, it's consistent with all the previous videos, and nobody gets excluded because they can't use the glasses for whatever reason. The allure of new-ish technology could easily have tempted the team into making a misstep here, but instead it's just a neat little bonus. Always nice to see forward thinking design. If there's a way in which this game is very much behind the times, it's that kids probably aren't going to play it anymore. Don't get me wrong, it can be enjoyed by adults, but it seems designed to tap into that imaginative period of growing up where you take on an understanding of the world without yet fully knowing what is or isn't possible. 
It arrived at a time when all a computer game had to do to capture a child's attention was be a computer game, which I don't think holds true anymore and might never be true again. Still, I'm willing to write this off as a change in the times rather than some kind of objective flaw with the product itself. Approach it with the right mentality and there's still a lot to enjoy here. Just remember, your controller only has one life.